Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. Uh, I'm here in a very lavish studio. Uh, uh, don't even ask. But uh, I'm here with uh, Susie, they call you. And um, you uh, were one of the, uh, I'd say, victims of war crimes, really. Uh, you kind of fell through the cracks in terms of media attention. But your story is just as, just as important. Uh, from your point of view, you were on that bridge on November 20th, uh, freezing water being uh, f shot. Actually, no. Um, I actually, I got taken out within the first 30 minutes. I am information. I am dispatched for a Kichita. They took me out within the first 30 minutes. They actually pointed a cannon at my head, shooting five or six rounds that I remember from my sight um, while they barreled to my face and one actually hit my eye and I embraced that pain. But um, actually, no, I was taken out very early, probably within 30 minutes of that six hour battle that night. Of course, of uh, war crimes, you know, and a war tactics, you take out your information hub first. And there, um, we got witnesses pointing me out from the officers, um, which they did a good job of that. And uh, the tear gas canisters uh, were shot pretty much point blank range near you. Yes, 15 feet maybe in front of me, straight directly at my head. I got a headshot. Um, I had like about this much room before they would actually hit my temple. I would have been dead today, um, which I'm so grateful I'm not because I do have four children at home that have been bearing with me so, so, so much. And I'm um, going back in, they're in boarding school right now, so I'm just so grateful I'm still alive here today. Being Talk to me about the first uh, day or two, because I know there was this frantic 48, 72 hour period that the government let you down. Uh, pretty much public information also let you down. Geez, our, my IHS with the Navajo plan plus my Arizona Medicaid was not good enough. Um, Grub Retina Center in Mandan was turned me away without no insurance. So then I call up my mom, who works for IHS, who calls up the IHS facility that's under my district, who tries to get a liaison to work through Standing Rock, which Standing Rock would not accept me, which I don't understand either. And then um, to get me care, and then I finally get the care that I need, but I'm already in Fargo a day later because of all of these things that are happening. And, um, but Group Retina Clinic did push me out, even though it was a 72 hours emergency retina um, reattachment to my eye. And um, I'll never see again. It took too many days. I fell through the cracks of our system. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm standing here now. I, I know this is a bigger battle. I, I came here to save the water in the Mini Wachoni, which I hope we did. I, I, I don't know where they're relocating this. All the things that went out yesterday, I'm not too sure about these things. I think they're ploy tactics to try to like chase off of our vets that are here. Um, but um, when it comes to our Native American health insurance and our state health insurance as Arizona Medicaid, I did not get the, the treatment and the, everything that I needed to save my eye in 72 hours, which is sad. And I hate to say this being Sophia being white and then it's hard because I'm white also. I'm only half Navajo, I'm half Scott Irish. But for me to be unable to get the treatment I needed to save my eye over her arm, which is, that's fine. But your eye, like, I'll never see again. Like, you know, those are windows to your soul. It's just everything. Your eye is everything. You know, I would have lost an arm over any day over my eye. I would have traded five, both my arms over my eyes, honestly. And it, it just hurts me to have to say that because... I shouldn't have to explain why it's so important being Native American and um, and the, just our health care. It's just it's sad. Our treaties, they need to be honored not only for our land, but also health care is included in those treaties. We need, to, we need to take back just not only our land, but we need they need to honor our treaties as health care because obviously this is, I am, I am the reason. I am the crack that fell through. I am the person that fell through these cracks. I want uh, our viewers to tr really understand what happened and understand uh, how the healthcare system screwed you. So you said uh, the first 72 hours is critical, where if you would have got the proper health care, they could have somehow saved your retina. Can you explain that? Yeah, um, from there I got sent to, okay, I got sent back to the ophthalmologist after, we'll start from the beginning. Okay, um, I went to the emergency room. They, um, they did stitches, they put me to sleep. And I woke up about 8 a.m. being forced out of my bed, being forced to order breakfast. Like, it was so dizzy, I could barely wake up. Um, they forced me into the shower. Luckily, the CNA was so nice, and she was 
she was able to like help bathe me because I couldn't even lift up my own arms at the moment. Then I get chased out of the room without eating my breakfast and um, sent down to the lobby. And they asked me earlier that, that morning if I knew anybody that could come help me. I said, no, I don't have nobody's phone number. I don't know. But can you please call a Standing Rock EMT because I'm sure they have the phone number from the medics there at camp that call them all the time, you know, somebody to help me. Um, but no, I get drifted off into the lobby. Once I get dropped off to the lobby, I ask again. I said, so did you guys call? And then they're like, well, there's a phone over there for you. That's what the lady told me. And so. And, at, know, and at, this, at this point, you're, were you holding your eye? What, was something blocking your eye? Um, no, nothing was blocking my eye, honestly. Um, they didn't even have it taped up, nothing. Like, and, and I didn't understand that either because, like, the doctor right now, the retina specialist, he has me have my eye covered completely with, like, gauze and everything underneath um, for at least 24 hours after each time because the health of my eye, like, the fact that my retina is detached or partially was partially detached which is now like detached that has nothing to do with why I'm not going to be able to see the trauma to my eye was so bad from getting the tear cast canister straight to my eyeball that that's the reason I'll never see again and that's the reason I'll never or I only have a five percent chance of ever being able to see any form of light again which I can kind of see redness a little bit but we know, uh, we know how the Morton County uh, police works. This video is going to go out. They're going to call you a liar. They're going to say other protesters are playing with propane and tear gas, and that's how you got hurt. You know what? That's bullshit because I was taken out within the first 30 minutes. They knew what they did. They pointed me out to another officer that pointed me out. They targeted me being dispatched. They know who Susie is. They've seen me here a long time. It's bullshit. Um, we have witnesses to this. We have witnesses saying to do headshots to women. They can go ahead and say whatever they want because I am not like Sophia. And unlike Sophia pushing um, whatever she did. I don't know what she did, if she even did that, because I can't believe Morton County half the time because all they do is just lie all the time. They just lie all the time. And the media helps them lie. Yes, and their media helps them lie. And that's what's sad. Like, um, that's why I'm very like um, cautious to which media I do because your words can be twisted in so many ways. But you know what? Fuck Morton County. I'm just straight up telling them that right now. My eye is the reason because of Morton County. And they know they did this to me. They knew who I was. They did this on purpose to me. They targeted me out within the first 30 minutes. That was the first ambulance. It took an hour for the ambulance to even get here to get me. Nobody else was even hurt at that time before the water cannons went off and before these people were doing all sorts of things. And that's also what sets me because you know what? Sometimes being a Kichita, I have to stand against my own people. I have to turn my back with the police officers and turn against my own people to make sure that they're safe because they don't know what they're doing when they're running up to those front lines. They're very unprepared. Like the woman I just, the media woman, I don't know who she was, but I just left, okay, they're hooking up the second truck. I walk in with the second truck. Normally I'm behind the Kichita. I'm dispatched. So um, I hear a woman yell for help. So I duck down. I go to go reach for her. And as I do that, I hear the cannon go off. So I turn my head, I look up, and normally these things are going 50, 100 feet in the air. Hell no. Six, five, six, straight to my face. 15 in front of me. Straight in front of me. One hits me. I, I already embraced that. I already knew it was coming. I could feel it. I could see it on fire as it hit my face. I grab my eye. I turn around. And as I run, they shoot me with a rubber bullet right here. Right in my back. Right, right on my ass, which made me fall, which made me yell, Amakiapo, help me. Which I um, I think the woman that I was going to originally help, which I left myself vulnerable, which was wrong. I shouldn't have left myself so vulnerable. But, you know, with an in intuition and just being a normal human being, you hear somebody yell for help, you just go to them. And and that's, um, that's the main reason why I'm hurt today. And... Um, I don't fall under the categories of the other, a lot of the other people that they call agitators or whatever. I don't because I've been on these front lines for so long and I keep those people back, those passionate people. Their hearts are just so, so much passion. I don't call them agitators. I just call them passionate because, you know, like I, I feel the same way they do. I do every day, but I know that I cannot act this way. This is not what the tribe wants of them. And we have to remain prayerful. So... 
that's my job is the Kichita. And it, it's it's a really hard job to have to sometimes turn and be on the side, like turning with the cops and looking at your own people to help them know or just to let them know that what they're doing is it's careless. And it puts other people's lives in jeopardy as well as mine that day. Last question. Um, you know, I think the instinct for people around the country is to see a headline, you know, Barack Obama doesn't give a final permit and to, you know, celebrate him as, you know, the great saint of Standing Rock. But, you know, war crimes were committed here and you're a symbol of that. Uh, and I don't think that should go, you know, unanswered for. Uh, what would you like to see happen, uh, not just to Morton County police, but all the politicians and just all the people who stood silent, looked the other way as people like you were savaged, assaulted, and now your life has forever changed. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm working on, um, I want to sue, they said, sue them to death, Susie. <laughs> and um, I like, like money is not important to me. I could really care less about money. I would, I'll probably end up giving all this money away in so many different ways. But the fact that is somebody needs to be held responsible for what happened to me. Uh, Morton County. They, those tear gas cannons say they only got 30 feet. 30 feet within somebody and they'll hurt somebody. They weren't even 15 feet in front of me when they launched these at my face purposely. Two, the people at Dapple. I blame Dapple also. I believe they should be in my lawsuit because if it wasn't for them paying off Morton County to freaking protect them so much, this wouldn't have happened either. Thirdly, I want to, um, there's minor a few doctors minor a few cnas or nurses that did have legitimate hearts to try to help me um they're all responsible as well as our native american health insurance as well as my own tribe i'm not even gonna lie there's there's faults there as well as our government with these treaty issues there's so many people responsible but the treaties is where it begins as native americans we we're promised health care as part of these treaties for our land it's bullshit that I did not get the health care that I needed with state insurance and with IHS Navajo. My eye could have been saved. I, I could be seen today. But um, but I, it's already happened, you know. You have to, I have to remember that. I have to remain humble to that. It does very upset me very much. I just don't want this to happen to anybody else. And they say this war is over. You know, they say that these things have been revoked, but it hasn't. I think this is another ploy tactic, like I was explaining earlier. It's another ploy tactic because they're scared of all these veterans that came in. And um, we need to stand here with Standing Rock still because I don't think this is over. They've been drilling every day that they said they're not supposed to be drilling. They're willing to pay those fines. They're willing to pay every day those fines. So with my eye, I'll get over it. Mm -hmm. But um, standing with Standing Rock, we need to save the mini Wachoni. I don't think this is, um, despite the press release, the Armored Corps saying it's revoked, I don't think it's saved yet. It's still under. Um, they're probably drilling right now. Why are the lights still on, you know? Why? <laughs> uh, well, there's nothing really I could say that's going to make things better, but I, I will, uh, on my end, uh, keep this attention on. And thanks for your bravery and everything you've done. Thank you. I've, I've followed this guy a long time. He's, I've seen him around camp a long time, and I really appreciate what you do. I really do. I appreciate it. Yeah, but I do have a GoFundMe, and it is by Cherie Lynn Solomon, my cousin's sister. Um, a lot of people have been saying it's fake. It's not fake. Um, I just haven't been able to access it yet because my ID was taken at North Camp. And because she put for Vanessa Dundon by Cherie Lynn Solomon, Go find me wants an ID, and so I have to get back to Arizona to get that ID, which I've been able, unable to get so far. So please just keep sending support to my GoFundMe. Um, you can also directly money order me to Stephen Hansen, but you have to give me that reference number to my Facebook. Sue, S I O U X Z, Desba, D E Z B A H, care of um, Stephen Hansen. So that would help me out in the meantime because I'm sure um, I think my GoFundMe is around 100000 a new eyeball, a new eyeball transplant is going to cost me, I'm sure, a lot more than $100,000, unfortunately. Probably cost me like a million. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll put the information at the bottom of this video so you could go to her GoFundMe, you could learn more about her. Um, and she might say money is not everything. I agree. But we're going to try to get this woman some money to make her life a little easier. And uh, thanks again. I appreciate it.